what's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we are back at it with the creepy and disgusting adventures of everyone's favorite green smashing atrocity. That being, of course, the Incredible Hulk, issue number five. But before we dive into the horror filled landscape of the Hulk, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way, you guys never miss out on anything that happens on this majestic channel. So, what are you waiting for? Let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan. Hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's get violent and gross. Huh, that's a weird combination of emotions, but I digress. With the Incredible Hulk, issue number five. So, our story picks up with some really freaky stuff. Check it. In the previous issue, Charlie, the young girl who's been traveling with Bruce, or as I like to say, a less annoying version of Rick Jones, is having herself a night full of terror, as we see her getting taken away by a swamp siren. Basically, this disgusting thing that should immediately be shot on sight tricks its victims by using their guilt of a loved one's passing by using a form of that someone, in this case, Charlie's brother. And once the prey is close enough, this disgusting pimple of tentacles reveals its true form. Gross. Meanwhile, as you pick up with Hulk and the Man-Thing, whom currently has our big green hero trapped in a nexus of realities. Now basically, Man-Thing provides Hulk with a breakdown. He basically says that something has awoken. Something extremely powerful has returned. And like Rita Repulsa, it's sending monsters loose on our planet. And whether the Hulk cares or doesn't, it's irrelevant. He's involved whether he likes it or not. And right now, there's a monster here in Florida, a Swamp Siren which apparently centuries ago used to be a little girl, but now she's become a wretched monster and her presence has been tormenting the town. Man-Thing needs the Hulk's help if they have any shot at destroying this thing in bits. Now, despite Hulk still not giving a shit, Man-Thing tells him that the girl Charlie you've been taking care of, well, right now, as we speak, she's in danger and it has to do with that disgusting monster. So yeah, seeing that he doesn't have a choice, given the fact that the Hulk cares about Charlie, he's down to smash. And with that, Man-Thing sends himself and Hulk out of the Nexus and back into the physical world. And oh my god, Christ on a bike, Hulk is smashing this thing to pieces. He is fucking the crap out of this thing. And good, because it's gross, and I hate it. Burn it down, Hulk. Burn it down. And so once the monster is clearly dead, Man-Thing makes his departure via the swamp. Now, while Charlie is still freaking out about what happened along with her brother's guilt trauma regarding the death of her brother, it's here where the Hulk begins to calm down. And within a few panels, the Hulk is back to being Bruce Banner. However, once he turns back, we see the arrival of Betty Ross. Now, this appearance seems very random, both for our characters and for us viewers. And because Bruce has so much guilt when it comes to Betty, us and Charlie can't help ourselves but allow our like, flags to go off. Because clearly this has to do with the Swamp Science doing. But turns out, nope. We were just wrong. Because upon Charlie throwing a stick, Betty in response turns into the Red Harpy. And once we see that the stick has little to zero effect, Betty gets right to the point as to why she's here. And it turns out that she's here on the eldest's behalf. According to Betty, the eldest is the oldest of us monsters. She knows everything. And she knows you. It seems Betty was sent here in order to make a deal with the Hulk. For the eldest is willing to create a life. A fresh new body for someone like Bruce Banner to inhabit it. A change to start anew. The only thing is that the eldest in turn wants the Hulk. However, Bruce, as we can see in his panel, doesn't like the sound of what's cooking. Sure, no doubt Bruce would love to have a new body and a different life, but he's not willing to let go of the Hulk and to give it away to some eldritch creepy monster god. Like, that just screams bad idea. And so with that, the Red Harpy takes off. But a question is then left to be answered to our protagonist. Sure, things are okay right now with regards to the Hulk. How many transformations before the Hulk's persona takes over completely and deletes everything about the one and only Bruce Banner? And that, folks, was the end of The Incredible Hulk, issue number five. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. So one of the things I love about Philip Kennedy Johnson, and he did this back in his World War Saga story in Action Comics, is that he finds a way to insert horror and creepy stuff into the story, without it making it feel like a default horror book. I think the concept of the Swamp Siren is really neat, and it's definitely creepy, but its power has the ability to challenge our characters if you're fighting something that has the ability to use images of loved ones and, you know, as a way to get in your head, it's pretty dope. However, once the Hulk confronts this thing, it's game over. This piece of shit has zero chance. Now, of course, smashing is a thing when it comes to the Hulk, but never did the monster challenge our hero. 
It was like, boom, done. Okay, on to the next issue. Now, I'm not saying that the Hulk should have lost, but what I am saying is that this creature, in terms of story and challenging the character, had potential and might have added more meat to the table. The table, of course, being this issue. This is a real simple read. And this is the same issue I had with Donny Cates' Hulk comics. The issues felt too damn short. Now, let's return to the positives. I like the return of Betty Ross, aka Red Harpy. I find it somewhat weird that she would trust a monster like the Elder One. So one's gotta assume that Betty isn't being told the entire truth or this isn't Betty at all. I don't know. But regardless, it's cool seeing her entering the story. Betty Ross isn't the best when it comes to being the damsel in distress. However, her being the woman who Bruce loves is something you can't beat. And you can never really protect just on how much the Hulk is willing to smash for Betty. God, that sounded bad. Overall, this issue is fine. I wish there was more of an emotional weight. I want to care more about the relationship between Hulk and Charlie rather than just reading the words on the page. And you know, like, I think it's time I start feeling invested in the series and I've yet to actually feel that. So yeah, as always, I'm your majestic Sayo for its super cliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload. And so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number six? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace, giggity goo.